Hey everybody, welcome once again. We are live from the man cave. Um, I always like saying that now. It's going to be like my new thing when I film in here. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm here today to talk to you about, or to continue our series of uh, Secret Wars reviews. Today we're going to talk about number two. All right, um, just in case you didn't get a really good look at that cover there. Try to see if you can see it okay. A lot of good covers in this run. Uh, a lot that I'm a big fan of. So I'm going to try not to make it so uh, quite so drawn out as last time, especially on the recap side of things. I'm going to try to get a little bit more to my thoughts this time. But um, just quickly to recap where we left off uh, last time. Uh, we went over the rosters and everything, kind of where things left off. Uh, the villains were attacking the uh, hero team. Um, I think something important that I can't remember if I mentioned in the first review was that Ultron um, kind of went crazy and tried to attack all of his team, the villains, and Galactus basically shut him down really quick with one move. I don't remember if I mentioned that last time, but it's important to know going forward. All right, so uh, quickly, just to re uh, or just to go over what happened in number two, um, the villains go ahead and attack. They're using the futuristic alien technology on this planet made available to them by the Beyonder. Um, the villains attack with guns. They immediately take out Colossus, and honestly, I think they take out about half the heroes. Um, I did notice uh, there were some moments of humor in it, which I thought was pretty cool. Kind of remind me of uh, the MCU in in. 80s comic form which is cool um the villains think that uh dr doom is dead at this point because uh kang shot him down last time but he did survive that um it's important to remember that the beyonder basically gave this uh information he said slay your enemies and all you desire will be yours so that's kind of the only motivation anybody has i mean i think some of the top tier people are saying, hey, maybe we should, you know, kind of question what's going on here, and everybody else is like, let's just win, especially on the villain side, which I think is kind of funny. Um, <clears throat> so while the battle's kind of commencing, uh, Doom, Dr. Doom seeks out Galactus. Uh, he wants to basically have counsel with him, maybe see if they can come up with a plan together, because, I mean, obviously Galactus is probably your best bet of doing anything outside of the rules here. Um, although the Beyonder swatted him like a fly last time as well as doom um uh just some, some highlights from the battle uh she hulk headbutts the enchantress and says and i quote oh wow that was like tubular you know to the max and that is the 80th sentence i've ever heard but the way it read it was so over the top i almost wonder if it was some sort of joke that went over my head because I, I think that's called like, speaking like a, a valley girl back in the day. I don't know. I don't know. I just thought that was hilarious. So, <laughs> um, Also, it was a pretty good moment for She-Hulk. Like, she knocked out the Enchantress. She, she did a number on her. Uh, long story short, the heroes pretty much end up beating the villains for now. The villains did have the upper hand, and they did take out a lot of heroes. But I think it was mainly the Hulk, Human Torch, Spider-Man, Captain America leading. They, they sort of formulated a plan, and they... They, they pretty much made quick work of the villains at that point. And the villains weren't at full strength. You know, you still got the wild cards of Doom out there, Magneto out there, Galactus, Ultron. Um, <clears throat> so anyways, uh, the heroes, well, they kind of just stall the villains. Both sides kind of leave, but the heroes do take some prisoners, apparently. Um, they find a giant fortress, which I believe the Hulk says is 50-plus times the size of the Pentagon. I mean, this thing is huge. It has at least over 100 floors uh, i think quite a bit of floors i just can't remember the number they put on it um lockheed the dragon who i didn't know about last time i still don't really know but i did discover that it is kitty's um i don't know if that's kitty pride or, or somebody else um because i can't remember if colossus has like a sister named that or, or what but um but anyways colossus is the one who kind of gave that tidbit so that's why i wasn't sure he's currently lost he was holding his own the dragon was and that now he's currently lost but so the Enchantress is placed in, you know, the alien tech, uh, it's a healing cell generation chamber. So basically, she was in bad shape after what She-Hulk did to her, but I think it was Reed Richards said she's basically only going to wake up with a black eye due to this technology. You know, they're, they're taking care of her after beating her. Um, <clears throat> so they also have a prison that's going to hold the, um, whoever they took prisoner 
Um, they're going to hold them as sort of a stasis. I wish I knew the exact villains that were taken prisoner, but I don't. I'm pretty sure Kang is among them, but everybody else will be process of elimination, and uh, I didn't get a chance to write that down. Um, but they're, they're being held in a stasis, uh, so it's very humane. It's very just, you don't have to worry about their threat either at the moment if you've got them. So um, <clears throat> Galactus and Doom, Molecule Man, Dr. Octopus, The Wrecker, Absorbing Man, Magneto, they're all still out there. Um, <laughs> kind of the biggest names to watch out for if you're the heroes that are still out there. So, um, so I guess Blizzard must have been captured as well. So Dr. Doom uh, goes, basically Galactus rejects him. Galactus just goes and does his own thing. Uh, Doom goes back to the villain fortress. It's guarded, but he, he kind of takes care of the safeguards, uh, which were like missiles. It wasn't any of the, the roster. Um, <clears throat> and so he, he kind of just takes a moment to learn about the technology. He discovers Ultron, who's kind of just laying dormant after what Galactus did to him. So Dr. Doom being the opportunist that he is, he goes and, uh, re I guess, reprograms him to where now Ultron is sort of the bodyguard slash henchman for Dr. Doom, which is crazy because I think Ultron could take Dr. Doom and so now, because of Dr. Doom so intelligent, he's got Ultron working for him, which is great. Dr. Doom really shines in this whole story, I'm just going to tell you. Um, meanwhile, Magneto sneaks around. He goes to the Hero Fortress. He goes to sort of like the power core of the fortress. Um, he starts kind of... Uh, causing trouble. He has a plan, but I don't remember it specifically stating what his plan was. So he he uh, causes a ruckus. All the heroes come charging. Uh, Magneto manages to make it out because there's so much metal for him to use in there. Uh, he ends up capturing the wasp and in that sort of the chase sequence, Magneto does get away with the wasp, but in the chase, um, the thing randomly turns into back to Ben Grimm, the human, um, and it has not been explained yet, and, uh, you know, obviously the Ben Grimm is saying, whoa, why am, why am I this way? So, anyways, that happened. It's not really explained. Um, they, the heroes are like, whoa, we have to go, you know, rescue the wasp, and due to the hero intelligence of, you know, scouting and what they've discovered, they cannot pursue Magneto in force right now because Galactus is on his way to the fortress. And so that is where the, um, the book ends. Um, I think this may have been even better than the first issue. Like, I love that you don't have to wait too long to jump into the action. Um, <clears throat> I think some highlights were definitely She-Hulk versus Enchantress. Um, the, I would say, techniques, uh, sort of the strategy of the heroes to defeat the villains after the villains caught them by surprise with the alien tech. Um, the heroes did take their licks. Something important to note, which I think is one of the more interesting like, if you like things just beyond the action, you like reading between the lines and like to see sort of how all these big personalities interact with each other. The X-Men, bless their hearts. I, I love the X-Men, but they get doubted at every turn. <laughs> their allegiance is always sort of questioned because they're mutants, which is sad. But, I mean, it's kind of the point of the characters to demonstrate these things. So, when Magneto does his thing, just so happens the X-Men weren't around to help with the fight. So, immediately Captain Marvel says... Anybody notice, you know, the X-Men weren't here to help fight against Magneto. You know, that's suspicious. And uh, Captain America basically had to say, look, cut that out. We can't we can't be having these types of things right now. We just can't deal with that on top of everything else. So right now the X-Men aren't in, like, the best position. I know Wolverine's not helping them because he, he just kind of has a smart mouth and complains about everything. <laughs> but, uh, man, what a great read. Uh I really like this book a lot. I mean, I, I know this story keeps getting better and there's a lot of twists and turns and different things that happen, but I'll say standouts are Doctor Doom, Magneto, um, I mean, Captain America, Reed Richards, and the Hulk are getting a whole lot of shine. It's kind of like how you think. The Avengers are kind of put on the forefront. Um, Spider-Man shows up in a whole lot of scenes, but he's not been given a whole lot of dialogue, and that's okay because, you know, we got a lot of issues left to go. Um, but right now, they've, they've heavily focused on some of the, the big names who, if this was happening in real life, you would consider them the leaders, you know, Captain America, Reed Richards, Bruce Banner, the Hulk. So, um, that's definitely one thing. The, the villains are not organized. I think the villains overall have the, the firepower to beat the heroes. 
I would say, confidently between Galactus, Molecule Man, Doctor Doom. I mean, even guys like Doctor Octopus and the Lizard. I mean, <clears throat> the Lizard's more like a brute strength kind of thing, but Doctor Octopus has intelligence to go along with with his side of things. Um, obviously, you have Ultron. I didn't mention that the villains came back to their fortress, found Doctor Doom waiting on them tried to attack him because for some reason in the issue before they made him their leader he said something they didn't agree with they basically said never mind tried to kill him he comes back takes their fortress so they're back to trying to kill him he all of a sudden brings out ultron who <laughs> embodies everybody <laughs> and they were like whoa you you reprogrammed ultron wow all right you can be the leader and they literally give up just like that it's it's kind of funny but it's okay. I have no problem with it because it moves the story forward. I like the pacing. I think the pacing is one of the strengths of the story. It doesn't have to be that complex. You know, the whole point of this is to take a bunch of good guys and a bunch of bad guys and let's just see who wins on this, basically this world that just has all this technology. Like, the Beyonder is basically playing a game. He wants to see who will win. I mean, that's at least my interpretation. You know, not a lot's revealed about the Beyonder to this point in the story, so... Um, you don't even know what he looks like. So that is, it's a very simple premise, but what they do with it is just great. I think it's its nice. You don't have to worry about outside factors. You don't have to worry about, like, if Mary Jane is captured and Spider-Man can't go as hard as he can. If, uh, you know, it, randomly th things are happening. It's just, there's basically not a whole lot of hindrance. I don't know what's going on with the thing, but basically these people just have free range to do whatever they can. So... Um, I'm just going to wrap it up. I'll say that I really like that issue a lot. Uh, the villains, I think, make it very interesting. The heroes are what are making me uneasy. Like, they can't get along. I'm like, no, you're the heroes. You're supposed to get along. Stop being mean to the X-Men, you know? <laughs> um, so, yeah, so that's what's going on. The villains are making it interesting. They can't get along, but at the same time, they kind of move past issues more quickly than the heroes do, I think, because there's some lingering things going on with the heroes. But anyways, um, as always, I want to recommend this whole series. If you ever get a chance to read it, like I said the first time, I read it digitally. I did not have the luxury of finding all these books when I was about 19 or 20 when I read all these. Uh, not by a long shot. I didn't get all these books, the complete collection, until last year. So, um, But if you get a chance, any capacity that you can, read these books. They are awesome. And... Uh, Hey, uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. I appreciate it. Bye.